Hello everyone, this is the Archfiend, and this is a day in my life. Many of you out there have asked me, what is it like to be the Archfiend? What is it like to be a YouTube partner? Well my friends, I'm going to tell you and show you just what that is like. I am going to give you an end-to-end -end walkthrough of an entire day in my life. Basement dwelling virgin that lives in their parents' basement and, you know, <laughs> Although I don't live in my parents' basement, I am a virgin, and and I, I, it's it's really not that big a deal. This guy is the Archfiend. That is all. Nah, just kidding. The Archfiend is one of the oldest YouTubers on the platform, making videos dating all the way back to 2007. He's been on the platform for almost 14 years, which dates him back with YouTubers like the Angry Video Game Nerd and Boogie2988. The Archfiend would make content that would be mostly satirical, having videos parodying current events that were on the platform, and just talking about whatever was interesting him at the time. He was a pioneer of new related topics, something that is dominated on the platform nowadays, but the Archfiend was one of the first YouTubers to simply talk about whatever was going on on the platform at the time. His first YouTube video uploaded on his channel was a re-upload of a POV roller coaster ride, and slowly his channel would transition to a ranting style of videos. Hello everyone. Where to begin? Now, this style of YouTube back then was a completely different landscape back in the day. The only way a channel could earn money on the platform was if they were a part of a YouTube network that could get them the connections they needed so that they could get partnered by YouTube. It's much different from what it is today and where you just needed a decent amount of subscribers and watch time to get partnered. Back then in 2007 and even 2010s, the early 2010s, it was a lot harder to get partnered. The Archfiend wasn't afraid of going after larger channels that were profiting from YouTube and even making videos on people like Shane Dawson, Ray William Johnson, and even made rants on the Angry Video Game Nerd really years before it was more of a common theme to make rants on other people on YouTube. Hello everyone, this is the Archfiend. This is, I would say, the one video that I've contemplated making the most. As of recently, James has done a number of things that I consider to be unethical, just bastard things to do, for lack of a better term, and a number of other things, but I can't keep quiet about this shit anymore. I've, like I said on my live video, gave my thoughts about it, and why do people have this notion that this movie is going to absolutely be made? There is absolutely zero guarantees that will tell you this movie is absolutely going to be made. He's getting thousands upon thousands of dollars from his fans to finance a film that is simply in pre-production at this point. If the film doesn't get made, does he have a contingency plan for getting the money back? No. The Archfiend wasn't a fan of other content creators on the platform using misleading thumbnails and titles to try to use words to cheat the system. His most viewed video, where it was just a video of him showing how the irony of making a big YouTube video on YouTube was just based on clickbait. Even in the video, he basically roasts everyone who thought this was legit. Hello everyone, this is the Archfiend and guess what? This video has nothing to do with the thumbnail picture or the title or the video description. This is just me making a protest video of sorts. It's me protesting against all these out there that have to make videos with the fake thumbnail picture or the video description that says real life footage of this event click to see and all this other misleading sh now it's mainly a lot of YouTube partners that take advantage of this because they can change that little thumbnail picture for the video and um, it's it's kind of it's kind of sad that people have to rely on like this just to basically generate views and revenue and basically this is my protest against all those that do that. I'm not going to name names here because you all know who you are. Another video that is highly viewed on his channel is the Let's All Laugh at Fanboy comments, where this may be the type of content you would see from a video game donkey today. The Archfiend was doing this type of content back eight years ago. I'm not a ten-year-old fanboy. 
I'm a 17-year-old female who looks up to PewDie. He shows a lot of his fans to do what you love, to do and don't let anything stand in your way. He inspires me to reach for the stars and don't look back. When I have sad or bad days to where I just want to rip my hair out, I turn on my computer and watch PewDiePie. He makes me smile and forget all about the bad things that goes on around me. I'm part of the bro army and I'm proud to say it. Bro fist, bro army will fight on, colon three. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay. Because the Archfiend would make a lot of content based on other channels, this would lead to his videos getting downvoted by fanboys that didn't like his criticism. This wouldn't stop him though, as these fanboys would be shrugged off and he would just use it to make future content on his channel. Because the Archfiend was making lots of videos responding to bigger channels, people would write him off as a clout chasing troll, but that couldn't be further from the truth, as the Archfiend would say all the time that YouTube was merely a hobby for him. He really liked expressing himself, and he didn't want to treat it as a job. On top of that, the Archfiend would choose not to monetize videos to single this point even more. And personally, calling the Archfiend a troll undersells what the Archfiend was really trying to do. He was simply just a guy on the platform making commentaries on drama and other channels messing up. If you're gonna call the Archfiend a clout chasing troll, then what do you say about other channels that do the exact same thing? Are they clout chasing trolls? Or is this simply commentary on what was going on on the platform? Think of him as a very early grade A under A who has a very similar style in his videos even though the Archfiend is much more raw and even the Archfiend himself has said that Grade A Under A is sort of a spiritual successor of what he was trying to go for with his videos. He genuinely cared for his viewers and he would make videos on things during his life to spread his experience to his viewers so he could advise people who were younger than him. For example, he made a video on college which was very helpful for me personally when I was younger, and he would even break down the basics of going to college and what you should do and what type of mindset you should have. If he was some internet troll, he wouldn't make some sort of video trying to help his audience become a better person. College is something that I see is, it's as hard as you make it for yourself. There's a number of things that you can do with college that I feel that I did that made it significantly easier for me. Um, I have a bachelor's degree, uh, major in political science, minor in history. One of my favorite college professors, one of the things he would do, and the students hated him for this, but now looking back, I'm like, that's probably one of the most valuable lessons he taught me. Anyways, what he would do is, once that, like say the class was at nine o'clock in the morning, that's the time the class started. Oh, seriously. If the class starts at 9 o'clock in the morning, once 9 o'clock hits, he locks that door. That was probably one of the more important instructors in my life. Just that you did not, you did not want to be that person that showed up a minute late. You want to take the extra effort to get there. And in life, that's what it takes to get a job done in a lot of circumstances. The Archfiend would even make content covering people like the Irate Gamer, who was basically the villain of video game reviews at the time, due to his similarities to the angry video game nerd. This would lead to the Archfiend making many videos on him, and not showing his bias towards any side, but definitely criticizing both sides too, all the way back in 2011. This is ironic because back then, criticizing the angry video game nerd was basically the equivalent of blasphemy. Now obviously times are different, things are different in general, but this was 2011, the angry video game nerd was basically like a god in the gaming community at the time. A lot of the Archfiend's content back in the day was the seed of what the platform would eventually become on a bigger scale, where a lot of the commentary community would just be at war with each other. However, while other channels would make content on other YouTubers to try to get clicks and try to get as much monetization as they can, the Archfiend is still just doing his same thing. Turning on his camera and talking in his room. That's what it's been back in the day and he still does it to this day. Saga, drama, whatever you want to call it is. But there's one thing that I can't stand. If two D-bags want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and fight each other, especially over the internet, have at it, 
But when the fight isn't fair and the platform on which they are fighting upon gives an advantage to one combatant over the other, I have a problem with that. And that's what we have because Keemstar in the biggest brain move he's done in all of this re-uploaded Gokunaro's H3H3 video, which I think is a fantastic video, exposes all the flaws of Ethan Klein, how much he's fallen in the past years, and just what a D-bag he is. And again, this is this is like this is like a case study. This is something to look at of what not to do on the internet with your stardom here. You know, at the time I'm just saying like I'm like I'm like this is this is this is kind of what Boogie deserves. Like he didn't deserve everything that was being said to him. But he he deserves this level of clowning on the internet because Boogie has crumbled his empire and I being one of the people that just sit here and revel in the fact that he his empire has just dwindled down to complete internet irrelevance compared to where he once was. And also, you can't really bring up the Archfiend without bringing up his huge love for football and the Philadelphia Eagles, as a lot of his content for a large period of time would be about football. There, there's still something to point to and say, this team fights back in the fourth quarter. They fight back and they... They find a way to either make it competitive or pull out a win. He even has a secondary channel called the Joke Fiend, which was a channel that goes unused today, but back 10 years ago it was a backup channel in case his main channel went down, which was a common occurrence back in the day because angry fanboys would just flag his videos. Unlike most YouTubers who started out very early on the platform, most either fizzled out over the years or became very big names on the platform. The Archfiend's content with his place on the platform, he's not trying to be something he's not, and he's not doing videos just for clicks. He's just a guy on the platform making videos. He's the people's content creator, as most of his fans are people that are diehard fans of his and that really want his perspective on things. Over the late 2010s, the Archfiend would go on many hiatuses, even making a video that he was quitting YouTube, before coming back and making more Philadelphia Eagle videos. The reason why he was taking so many hiatuses was because he was growing older and he ended up getting married and having a family. Even having a dog literally named New Dog which would feature in a lot of his videos. Life would simply get in the way for a while, but in early 2020, the Archfiend would return on YouTube where he is still active to this day. He still makes videos on YouTube drama, controversy, and news related content, but People like the Archfiend represent the golden age of YouTube, where simply the platform was just about broadcasting yourself and saying whatever you wanted. While the platform has grown and become more and more corporate and more related to pop culture, which means more big media is congruent with the platform, people like Archfiend represent the simplicity of YouTube, where you can simply say whatever you want and do whatever you want. I'm fine with that. It doesn't mean I'll have to agree with it, but... Whatever, it's, it's your domain, do as you wish. Now, about the whole censorship thing and people being like, well, they're, 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 they're killing off someone like Donald Trump's free speech. Well, no, because he's still free to speak. He's just not free to speak on a specific platform. They're not taking away his ability to speak at all. Some people would dismiss him as just being a simple internet troll or just being someone that wanted to strike reactions with disgruntled fanboys. I simply see him as a man trying to spread an honest message with his audience. There's a little bit of a pun there when you look at my channel name. Being honest on YouTube nowadays though can go a long way compared to how the platform has evolved and become more and more corporate. Thank you guys for watching the video, I really appreciate it. And make sure you subscribe to the channel to get more content. Alright guys, so peace out, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I know this video isn't really based on content I normally do on this channel, but I wanted to kind of spread out my interests a little bit and start making content based on internet lore and other people on the internet and stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy, subscribe for more content of course.